Hi guys, welcome back to Matt Chat. This is episode number 15, in which we cover not just one game this time, I want to try something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to be talking about a computer platform called Plato. And Plato stands for Programmed Logic for Automated Teaching Operations. Boy, doesn't that sound exciting. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, just bear with me for a few minutes and I think you'll see why I wanted to uh, talk about this uh, platform. Uh, a little background on it, it evolved beginning in the 1960s and it seems to be uh, tied in with the Cold War. Uh, you know, at the time, uh, the U U.S. was worried that we were falling far behind uh, the Soviet Union in terms of uh, science and technology. Uh, so there was a lot of money was pumped into uh, computer science, computer education, technology, engineering, uh, things of that sort, and Plato uh, was one of those projects. Uh, now Plato was a mainframe system or is based on the mainframe. So uh, whereas uh, your computer uh, sitting on your desk, all, most of the computations and calculations and everything happens right there in the box. Um, the mainframe uh, setup though, there's a sort of giant supercomputer brain and uh, terminals are connected to that, but the terminals only uh, accept input and output and interact uh, with this big machine that does the uh, heavy lifting. Um, in the case of Plato, uh, the, the uh, terminals consisted of a keyboard and a really cool orange uh, plasma display, uh, which uh, came out in uh, the 70s. Uh, by, the, uh, by the 1970s, Plato had been through several different models. Uh, this was the Plato 4, uh, which is what we're going to be uh, focusing on here. Uh, but it's very popular in schools. Uh, you can still run into, if you run into somebody who's, say, 40-ish, uh, uh, maybe 50 issues really into uh, was into computers from an early point maybe in college uh, they'll tell you just all kinds of stories about Plato how far ahead of its time uh, it was uh, and that was possible because of the graphic capability uh, but also the online nature of the games uh, now Plato uh, pioneered some of the technologies we take for granted today uh, like instant messaging and uh, chatting and uh, things of that sort uh, but what we're going to talk about here are the games um, even though Plato was uh, focused on education, um, there were plenty of games. Once people figured out how to use this uh, tutor programming language uh, that uh, Plato operated with, uh, they could make all sorts of really fantastic games. Uh, there's lots of different kinds of games. Uh, there, we'll be talking about uh, several different uh, games in this uh, match chat, uh, so stay tuned. I think you're going to be surprised at uh, what <laughs> Plato uh, had to offer. Before we get started, a little about me. Uh, my name is Matt Barton. You may remember me from such uh, previous Matt Chats as Matt Chat number 14, uh, The Lost Vikings, <laughs> and uh, Matt Chat number 13, uh, Metroid. Uh, I'm also the author of a book called Dungeons and Desktops, a book about computer role-playing games, and co-author of Vintage Games, a book that looks at uh, all the influential games from all eras and all platforms. And uh, by the way, Vintage Games was just released on uh, Slashdot in their book reviews. Uh, so if you, get a, if you get a second, go check that out. Uh, if you're still kind of on the fence about the book, maybe that uh, review will convince you uh, this is something, in, something worth your time, uh, something uh, worth checking out. Okay then, without further ado, let's have fun with Plato. I think I'll start us off here then with Space Sim. Uh, this is a 1976 game by Jim Bowery, or Bowery, not exactly sure how to pronounce his name. Uh, but as we'll see, this is a prototype of games like Elite and uh, Star Raiders, Wing Commander, Privateer. Uh, basically, we have a first-person perspective here of outer space, and we're in a ship. Uh, I will warn you, this is a very difficult game as far as uh, technicalities are concerned. They, uh, the author seems to expect you to know quite a bit about astrophysics, uh, which would make sense given the uh, educational background of the platform. Uh, but as you can see here, I'm looking out the back of my ship at the uh, space station. Uh, one neat feature here is you can adjust your camera so you can see what uh, space looks like from your ship or from the uh, planet. Or if you fire a torpedo, you can actually uh, see through the eyes of the torpedo. So you have some pretty neat options there. I'm not really exactly sure what the goal of this game is. I found a video with uh, the author where he's, he, he plays this game. And there's something about going to these other planets and harvesting resources, but <laughs> uh, I don't even have anywhere 
uh, close to the expertise needed to navigate to uh, another planet. Uh, but still, it's a very fun, very ambitious game. It's of if, if, it's of historical interest if for no other reason than we already have this uh, first-person wireframe uh, perspective. And it, I can only imagine how much fun this must have been uh, playing with uh, dozens of other people uh, all in the same universe. Next on the menu is a game called Panther, which is a tank game, and if you don't see a resemblance here to Battlezone, <laughs> you, you just haven't played Battlezone. Um, it's very similar, however, uh, just like with the Space Sim, this game too is very technical, very, uh, this, the learning curve on these games is whew, Grand Canyon-esque. Uh, you have to read a lot of text and make lots of notes uh, just to figure out how to control your tank. Uh, but you can do some pretty neat things. Uh, you can turn the turret, unlike uh, in Battlezone, uh, here the uh, turret, or your big gun in other words, uh, moves independently of the tank. So you can spin that around and then uh, you can make your tank uh, you know, uh, spin around to uh, match your turret and, and head towards another base. Uh, so again, um, and then you know, something else that Battlezone didn't have, of course, was the multiplayer aspect. Uh, but anyway, uh, I could see how this would be a lot of fun, a sort of a multiplayer battle zone. And you have some other fun things you can do, like lay mines, and uh, you can stay hidden, and you can uh, use your, uh, like the Space Sim game, you can magnify your view in and out so you can see things uh, far away. So another very ambitious and very interesting looking game. Probably out of all of these games, the one that looked the most interesting to me was this game called Empire, uh, which seems to be based on the uh, idea of uh, space conquest. Uh, there's a lot of uh, very blatant uh, Star Trek ripoffs in this and in uh, Space Sim, uh, by the way. Uh, but again, this was a very complicated game. I didn't, uh, I didn't get too far into it. Um, there were some other people online playing this as I was, which was kind of interesting, almost like I had uh, stepped into a, a time machine or something. Um, but as we'll see, I have a little, a little uh, Star Trek Enterprise-looking ship, and I can plot a course to different planets. I can bombard these planets. I uh, assume the mission here is to, like any uh, strategy games, to gather up resources and and uh, take out the opposition. There are. Uh, different uh, space empires I have to compete with, and, uh, Klingons and so on and so forth. Uh, but as you can see here, there are just tons of options. Uh, There's another very difficult game, but a very flexible and exciting game if you don't mind a steep learning curve. The next, the next games I'm going to show you are some of the role-playing games. I don't have time to show you uh, them all, which is a shame. Uh, but all in all, there's a pretty good variety here. Uh, the first one here uh, is called Orthanc, and it has a top-down view of the dungeon, uh, which is interesting. Uh, it seems to be a, uh, an early form of a game like Temple of Opshai. But again, I wasn't able to get too far into this. Again, very uh, steep learning curve, but I did have fun exploring the, the corridors and finding uh, some monsters to fight. This next game, Avatar, is supposed to be the best role-playing game for Plato. It's uh, certainly the most popular. What's interesting about it, uh, there is a lot of emphasis on groups and clans and uh, guilds and things that we'll see in, in later role-playing games. Uh, but it has a first-person perspective, as you can see, that tiny little thing at the top uh, that's, of course, uh, reminiscent of wizardry and the dungeons in Calabeth. Although these games, they may look simple graphically, uh, the engines are incredibly complicated. There's so many options. I thought I'd leave you here with this game called Air Fight, which is apparently the first, uh, one of the first, at least, uh, first-person flight simulator games. Unfortunately, this one was just uh, so difficult, I, I couldn't even get this plane off the ground. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I guess you need a pilot's license. And that's all for this week's Match Chat, but remember, know thyself.